Hey, Gabriel Malik. Hey, Gabriel Jose. Where are we today? I'm in San Francisco, where it is roughly 62 degrees and sunny. I'm in Chicago, where it's sunny and it's below that. Let's just say that. And I'm surprised. You have like how many dogs right now like jumping on top of you? Right now we have some some guest hosts. <laughs> I have my 65 pound pit bull while she's visiting my sister for Thanksgiving. So plus my three dogs. <laughs> Poor dogs, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So we may see, like, we may hear, like, some interjection, yes. <laughs> guest interjection. <laughs> today. They were completely silent during our prep, and now they're they're feeling the energy of the live show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they want to sign. They think that is their moment to sign. Uh, but talking about signing, what if it was this time? This was your pick, and you picked the fifty-one-year-old musical, Cabaret by Bob Fosse, period. <laughs> period, not even like with Liza Minnelli or anything, it's more of a, that's it, here you go. Well, actually, I wanted to read the first paragraph of um, the Wikipedia article that gives a little context. Listen to this, this blew my mind. Cabaret is a 1972 American musical period drama film directed by Bob Fosse from a screenplay by J. Preston Allen based on the stage musical of the same name by John Kander, Fred Ebb, and Joe Masteroff, which in turn is based on the 1951 play I Am a Camera by John Van Druten, which in turn is based on the 1939 novel Goodbye to <laughs> Berlin by Christopher Isherwood. <laughs> so many adaptations, so many indirections for just like getting to the root source material. That's hilarious. Um, so if you were to ask me, why did I pick these? It was more because I wanted a break from uh, from the David Fincher beans that we were getting into, you know, and more of the thriller part that we were getting into. So I wanted to just like have something a bit lighter. I'm not saying that it's light because, as you I said, it's like, a bit. So you picked the uh, Nazi Germany abortion musical. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, well, we will go into details into exactly what happens, but to be fair is that there is a lot that it happens on this there. movie. So two, two hours and three minutes, they managed to pack a lot in. <laughs> they, they managed to pack it two hours and three minutes of content. Uh, so as this was my pick, I'll bet you were like the one suggested initially. Do you want to summarize it? Yeah, so I'm happy to summarize it. Help me out if I, there really is a lot that happens in this film and so I'm going to leave things out, but essentially it's 1931 Berlin, um, a young and promiscuous American played by Liz, Liza Minnelli mm -hmm. is a cabaret dancer in a club called the Kit Kat Club. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the last days of the, I don't know how to say this, is it, is it Weimar? Weimar? It's the last days of the Weimar Republic, Nazis, the Nazis are coming into power. It's it's like a shifting time in Germany, but not quite fully Nazi-occupied Germany. Um, so there's a lot of foreigners and she is very much a bohemian, enjoying the lifestyle of, you know, being poor, but an artist in Berlin, which must have been crazy in the 30s. Um, so she lives in a boarding house and a British writer comes to Berlin. Uh, because he's completing a doctorate um, and he moves into the boarding house that where Liza lives or Sally, Sally lives. Um, they become friends and then she tries to seduce him where it becomes quickly clear that he is gay. Uh, <laughs> or uninterested. Un un he's tried three times to have sex with women and it's been a failure each time. And so Liza's like, oh, he's queer, it's fine. They just become friends. Um, but then in a moment where uh, Sally is particularly vulnerable because her father, we find out her father is not the wonderful person she claims he is, that he actually doesn't really care for her and stands her up. And... Oh, well, but also like the father is a diplomat, no? Basically a diplomat. <laughs> basically. We can't trust anything Sally says about anything, sure. basically, but we got proof that she lied about her dad. Uh, mm -hmm. being them having this amazing relationship and in this moment uh, where she and Brian are vulnerable they actually end, ended up having successful heterovaginal sex um, <laughs> well we're not giving so much detail but I just say that is like <laughs> they satisfy each other yes um, so they continue to be friends and uh, 
married playboy and a baron befriends Sally um, and Brian, and he whisked them off to their country estate. And they're basically, there's sexual attraction between men, between women, and um, what would you say about the time on the estate? I would say that everyone fucks each other. Yeah, I mean, everyone's very open, and at some point, Brian and Sally get in a fight, and Sally said, well, I'm screwing Max, and Brian says, so am I. <laughs> I like I like the definition there, how Liza, I mean, like, well, the character Sally explodes, and it says, like, oh, my God, you just betrayed me with him. He said, bitch, he said, we both betrayed each other. It's like, it's not that because I had sex with this other person. I like, I sort of had to say that I like that, that there was... I think that she tried to shame him for being gay, you know, for a second, and he turned around immediately and they just move on. And I, we were actually talking about this uh, before we started recording, how we enjoy gay themes in cinema, literature, media, whatever, that don't have to do with um, discrimination or AIDS. This is like a proudly queer film where there's nothing about like oh he's less than because he's gay no no he's fucking Liza and nice yeah. Uh, yeah. at the end of the movie basically is like, the only thing that it was less done it was juice well that that ending scene I was mortified mortified of the song of, if you could only see her through my eyes she wouldn't seem like such a Jew but the person he was singing to was a gay gorilla yeah yeah. Address? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but it's a bit more about like the transition. The movie is about like the transition from this kind of libertarian boy in Berlin, you know, where everyone is welcome. They may be poor, but they are like figuring things out to actually like the. Nope, we are full Nazis right now. It's like we actually like embrace that because there is a thing at the beginning where they kick out like a, a young kid that is like wearing a spastic you know, like Brazilian and just like dress up as one of the young Hitlers. Uh, and he's like just asking for money. They kick him out. There's another scene we see them like coming back and just basically beating the crap out of the security guard that they go kick out, that kick them out on the previous scene. And then at the end, it's like all of the audience are Nazis. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a really impressive to me backdrop for a musical that balances on the edge of absurdly um, cabaret, like the cabaret, the art of dancing, and these very serious themes of losing freedom, abortion, uh, sexuality, yep. and context of Nazi Germany. Yeah, yeah. So, I wish I could probably get... So okay. Good. No, it's going to say that... I'm going to finish the, <laughs> the synopsis that... Sure. Um, Obviously, she's she's having sex with two men. She becomes pregnant. Um, Brian offers to do the right thing, like a good British gentleman. And Mary, do they say Mary? But he wants to take her back to Cambridge. Yeah. She briefly agrees, and they have fantasies about you know living in a small cottage in Cambridge, which she very quickly comes to realize through these images in her mind that we get to see of her becoming a, a boring housewife, and she's like. Yeah, no, we're gonna abort this baby, which she does without discussing it with him. Um, yep. yep. And ultimately, they continue on. Yeah, I think that he even like this. She even describes like, "Hey, I will move there, but we would never be happy, and I will resent you. You will resent me." So I say, "Why we don't cut to the end result?" I, yeah, I think that's that... something that, that has always terrified me about relationships. Um, it's not the case in mine at least so far, but she says, how long will it take before we hate each other? And that's just so sad when you're in the moment and you love someone, but you know it's not sustainable. That is like going that way. Yep. Devastating. Yeah. Um, one thing that you didn't mention is that uh, the guy, the British guy, like for just sustaining sustaining himself or making money, Brian, is that he starts giving lessons, giving classes, like English lessons, yeah, in the boarding house. And he starts like just teaching uh i don't know bombi band i don't know how to call it like that gigolo they start like just teaching and also they start teaching like a british lady sort of like british lady like a german lady at the same time and they become like all of them friends 
they don't know like too much English. Of course, like Sally knows like the wrong type of things in English, but this von Vivant and the proper German lady, they start like some kind of relationship, but both of them, they were Jews, but only one of them is openly Jew. And the other one was like trying to hide that they were you. And he's like, oh, we cannot marry because you are not you. And then he actually comes out as you and they get married. But in between, they kill her dog. And that's like the saddest point in the whole movie. They kill her dog. And also, I, I could be wrong, but it's very clear that there is no future for this Jewish couple in like five years or so. I think yep. the dog was just like foreshadowing of... Well, yep. You better run. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So is that we see like that? I I don't know if I would. I think that I watched this movie like a long time ago. But basically, this is more like the absurd of the cabaret. You know, we see like many numbers on the cabaret. It reminds me a bit of a uh, the Cotton Club. That is a, a there is a story happening, but also is that we see a scenes of the Cotton Club, like where people go, like the patrons have a good time, and we see like a dance number, a music number in there, and it's a bit more about like what happens outside of the Cotton Club. Is this like a similar thing here? It's more about like how Germany is going like from this like openness to well, we're going to another terrible situation in Germany. I. I'm glad you pointed that out because I think that is a distinction for me because as I mentioned in the past, I'm not a huge fan of musicals, but the way Cabaret does it and the way the Cotton Club does it is that it's like, it's not people are just breaking out into song about love or whatever's yeah. happening. It's contextual. Yes. And that I'm on board with. Uh, do you know, do you know that the master of ceremony, I don't think that he has a name. But like the one, I think that he sings like most of the songs. Yeah. Only like two of them are like Liza Minnelli by herself, but most of them is actually like, or both of them, or the Master of Ceremony. He was in Dancer in the Dark. He was what? that, the Polish musical legend that Bjork adores. And he says that is his uncle or father even. Joel Grey? Joel Grey, yeah. He was Aldrich. Aldrich Novi. I don't remember this character. <gasps> it's my pick. I know what it is. <laughs> no, but you remember that it's like when they're in court, they bring him for testifying if he's related. They fly him <laughs> from Poland. <laughs> and I found like, this is surreal for just testifying if he knows Bjork. Well, Bjork, her character, Salma. Salma. I don't I start like dancing. I and it's like the song of I'll be there to catch you when you fall. Dude, I watched this movie a lot of times. I have too, but maybe I've blocked out or painful. And I listened to the soundtrack thousands of times. <laughs> thousands. I only listened to, what is it, 99 steps? 30, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. 39 steps. Not 39. <laughs> <laughs> it was 109 yesterday? No. I many times when that song comes on, I'm like, Pablo, Bjork makes counting good music. How is that possible? <laughs> 107 steps, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, but he was there. And it's like, now that I was checking like the cast, I was like, oh, that's right. He was in that. That's, that's sad. <laughs> like 30 years cool. later. Yeah. And he was in Nurse Jackie. So he's really done it all. all oh of my it. God, Nurse Jackie. Um, so did you like Cabaret? I liked it very, very much. I think this is a great film. I oh, think nice. it's an important film. My friend made me this list and uh, it was on the list. I didn't want to watch it because it was it was a musical, but I forced myself because I promised I would watch everything, all hundred of those films. Um, and when I watched it, I was blown away. And I, I was just impressed so much with the way Bob Fosse like to give you an example early on in the film you mentioned it earlier where they they get kicked out of the club there are these split sequences where you see the ridiculousness of what's happening on the stage and, and the violence super quick into the violence that's happening in germany streets yeah. and I, but it's so quickly done and so well done that it's jarring i was like this guy knows he knows how to direct a film and to 
yeah, I, it's just very impressive. I like this film. I don't even like Liza Minnelli. I like her in this, even though she's yeah. annoying. As I like. Wait, everything. wait, wait. You don't like her in Arrested Development? Forty years later. I, but at that point, she's kind of a caricature of Liza Minnelli. <laughs> fair. I That's fair. Like the singing, dancing stuff. I'm just not. I'm just not a fan of that sort of style. Of that's it. I would say I, I, I like, like the point that you bring up about like the just position of violence with the absurdism, you know. It just makes me think about um it's not the same. Definitely it's not the same. But it just makes me think about Scorsese and Taxi Driver. Old Scorsese, yes. Where he Old had Scorsese, that, yeah. That like, yeah. grittiness of hey, there's things are yeah. I agree. I it makes me think about like the interesting seventies. Basically, when you see it, hey, you know, that this is a cool kind of, you have a message and you may slide it under the table, you know, because this movie never says that it's about like, hey, it's about like Germany falling apart and how absurd, like they were living their lives at the same time. So, yeah, yeah I can understand. Did you watch like the, all of the 100 movies? Um, I never did. I got through like 70 of them. Do you still have the list? I do still have the list on a, my website. <laughs> <laughs> it's currently having a, a DNS issue, DNS server issue. But yes, I can, I can track down the list if you want. There were only a few things on there that I didn't watch. Specifically, I can remember um, Shampoo. Shampoo is one of them, which I was like, no, this is, this is too much for me. <laughs> We should, we should, I'll find the list. We can talk about it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's funny. That's funny. I, I'm interested because I got the feeling that there is like a small period of time. I think there is like 60s and 70s. And really for me, there is also a tiny bit of a gap. So there may be like interesting stuff to watch there. I have a lot of films that came out in the 60s by Ingmar Bergman you could watch. I think that I'm good on that front. Thank you so much. I watch enough Ingmar Bergman for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's yeah, it's more than I ever anticipated in my whole life. You know, after watching like the first five minutes of the Seven Seal, I never expected to see three movies, my bar man. Um Should we go over the questions? Yeah, let's do it. Uh would you watch Cabaret again? One hundred percent, which is so weird because even when you picked it and I knew rationally that I liked the movie, I still don't want to watch it. And then I watch it, I'm like, this is great. But you're the one that suggested it in the first place. Every single I time know, that you bring Cabaret. I don't understand. I, yeah. I'm confused about this movie. Yes, I'll watch it again. Okay. I mean, I will watch it again. But I remember like, the first time that you brought it up. And I think that I was still living in San Francisco. And you brought it up. And I remember saying said that you, you don't like musicals. I'm shocked that you are telling me that we should watch Cabaret. And it's when you told me about, like, oh, they has abortion. It has drama. <laughs> it's a pretty sad movie. I mean, yes and no. I mean, it's sad, but I think that the characters live in a bit of a denial bubble. Yeah. Well, like so is I it... did when Trump was in office, so... <laughs> That's fair. Um, good. Uh, so I will rewatch it. I don't know if it will be like in six months, in a year, but definitely it's a movie that if it's playing on the screen, I will be like, oh, you know, I want to see the abortion part again. Okay? Or I want to see like how it says, like, I'm screwing him up. And it's like... <laughs> I'm screaming up to. I really like that line about like, oh yeah, I'm screaming up to. Um, would you recommend Cabaret? Yeah, surprisingly so. I would have no reservations recommending it to anyone. I'm not sure if I would recommend it to my parents, but definitely I would recommend it. I think that is deeper than what you may expect out of it. That's fair. Uh, Although it would be interesting to, like, I'm guessing your parents were born in the 40s, 50s? 40s, yeah. Late 40s. I would be interested in this film just as a, hey, this is what the world was like when I was born. Mm. Not the world, sorry. This is a very it's small really. spot. Yeah, German this is very, really. I can assure you. I can assure you that Spain was not like that. <laughs> <laughs> we already had, like, those guys on the street. <laughs> Uh, well, no, the movie is on the 30... what year? I don't remember. It's 31, 1931. Yeah, no, 31, yeah. Then probably in Spain we will be at a better spot. 
but then it's like we went like downhill completely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we had a civil war before they even do anything, before they even invade Poland. Uh, I, don't, I didn't realize that timing. Interesting. Yeah, because they invaded Poland in 39, I think, and the civil war in Spain was 36 to 39. Jesus. Yeah, so it's like, Europe was fucked. It was a good time. <laughs> it was like that. And Mussolini in Italy, too. It wasn't uh, a good time for Hawaii, either. For what? It wasn't a good time for Hawaii, either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, could you remember Cabaret's? Um, honestly, I'm going to say no. Um, I know it's about Liza Minnelli getting pregnant and having an abortion. Everything else, I kind of have forgotten. I'm sorry. I've seen this movie multiple times. I just forget it between watchings. I... I hear you on that. I'm going to go with no too, but I think that the problem for remembering it is because a lot of stuff happens, and I don't think that the getting pregnant and having the abortion is the central part. It's, like it's if not we at ask, all. Yeah, yeah. If we are sort of like just makes me want to watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that the scene, like the scene that summarizes, is like that master of ceremony dance with the gorilla. Is that that what summarizes? Is that is that we are watching a thing that my boyfriend was like checking the phone. And it's like, when that happens, I was like, oh, and I was like, oh, what happened? And I had, because he was checking the phone and I actually just like rewind the movie to that. I say, like, oh, I say, that yeah. was really shocking to me. Like I felt uncomfortable and I get it. They show like the friendly, happy nature of the music and it gets darker and darker and darker. Like I get it. It's a nice device, but especially with what's happening in Israel and Palestine right now is like, we don't make these jokes. No, <laughs> we don't. A joke film. They're showing how horrible it is. It still yep. made me. Well, but they don't. They don't judge it. They I, don't. You don't think so? Well, they you don't, don't think that they're being forced to do that sort of content because of the Nazis. But we don't see it. They don't show that. Is that from our perspective? Is that we can even think that the cabaret, like the direction of the cabaret, they actually embrace like Nazi principles? We don't know. That's the part that is even more scary because it's like as a country they change, they embrace that. They say that hey, if we can actually blame it on a specific group, like everything bad that is happening, why don't we do it? No, yeah, it's you're right. It's vague. Interesting. I'm and I, I think that that's like the strength of this movie is that hey, you can even like just see like as you said, it's like if I were a kid like watching this. Maybe I would disregard like all of those like Nazi related scenes when they go like they stop when they're going on the car and they stop at the place and people start like standing up and singing that is like, oh, this is like the how do you say like the climbing not the climbing point, but the inflection point. I was like, yep, now this country is completely nationalist. Yeah, it's going off the rails. Yeah. But uh, I I think that I will remember that is about like Nazi Germany, like the pre-steps to Nazi Germany. But I don't think they will remember like the Eliza Minnelli gets pregnant because of abortion part. That's that's written in stone in my brain. So <laughs> that is free of rats in your brain. Okay, I'm going to go with no too because I don't think that I could remember much beyond like is Germany pre-Nazis. Um, is there anything artistic about it? Yeah, I, I think the direction is incredible. I think um, the the cabaret, they, I think it's a conscious choice to make it a little bit Fellini esque, like like yeah. the Teth, which I was super interesting choice. Um, I I think the acting is good. The the singing was tolerable. Um, yeah, no, the writing is good. I I like it all. I the whole concept is great. <laughs> I, I really like it. You know, from an artistic perspective, I agree with you. The directing is like really solid. I think that watching this makes me feel like Cotton Club is worse than it actually was because it tries to do like something similar and it doesn't nail the landing. I feel like, it's like you fall more flat. Yeah, I can see that. I, I agree. When you hold the Cotton Club up next to Cabaret, Cabaret comes out as stronger. 
That doesn't mean Wait. that was bad because it's a good film, but it's not. Quite you didn't good. score it too well, believe me. Yeah, but but in terms of the the concept, the attempt, I'm fine with it. Mm. Like it it's just not. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I agree. I think that is a, a probably a couple of actually was this and he thought that is hey i can actually adapt like this era you know like this era to actually like the prohibition area here and the discrimination making it about discrimination and is i think that it lands this movie lands in a very subtle way you know like the nazi story for yeah, actually, it definitely you can... doesn't hit you over the head with anything um it's it's kind of like we were talking last week with the killer it's kind of that same way where they're like we're not going to try to like explain anything to you like follow along if you can um yeah it's kind of that which i enjoy but i also think that the killer doesn't have like a larger message or a larger story yeah. <laughs> it's a bit more like self-contained storytelling style i would call it similar somewhat and how much do they want to feed directly to the audience i mean they say that is a lie similarly sorry sally actually got an abortion He says, he actually looks at the camera and says, like, hey, I ended up having an abortion. Yeah, but I'm talking about the more subtle stuff about how you're just supposed to observe Berlin going oh, yeah. downhill in the background and understand that the foreboding coming Nazis the implications, are affecting yeah. them all. And, yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, is it a timeless piece? Yeah, completely. Even though it's yeah. firmly like seated in a point in time that's important to the context of the story, the themes are endless and about theocracy or not theocracy dictatorship um and yeah uh, sexual freedoms bohemian freedoms all of that yeah and as we we're saying is like i'm impressed about like the part of not judging the character uh what's his name barry uh for brian. being brian brian uh for being bi or gay about like they try but it's that they basically like move away is that they give him a line for just disarming like sally's character and it's like let's move on it's that we all know we all knew this at the beginning we know now it's not important and also like i loved that um max was having sex with everyone at his estate but he was very clear i am married and we have an open relationship like none of yep. that is a point of discussion at all even it yep. just explains where the characters are at Yeah. And the thing is, I don't know if in the 70s, in the 70s, in the States, this would have seen as a bit of a how decadent they were in Germany, or if you would have seen like with a way of a, oh, how progressive they were in Germany in the 30s. I don't know. I don't know how the, the, the audience would perceive it, but there is not an implicit judgment in it. Which is interesting because after all those points of adaptation that I read off earlier, you would think that it would get more and more judgmental. <laughs> At least when it gets to America, there should be some like, you know, finger wagging, <laughs> gays are dirty, you shouldn't have but sex after marriage. Yeah, but it's the 70s, you know, that's the part that I feel is, I, I think that this is like one of those, the 70s were really good for cinema. Yeah, but the for social topics. The 40s and, and the musical came out in the 50s, which was a very intense time. And, Uh, well, I was going to say the voice in the band is from 1917. Yes, but but if Boys in the Band was based off a play or a book that came out in 1930... Two, no, 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 no. It was like two or three years earlier. What I mean is like 60s and 70s, especially the late 60s and early 70s, I had a feeling that they are like more open-minded about like how they portray like social topics, that it made it easier for these topics to age. Like these yeah, movies too. Yeah, I, I just I agree with that. I don't disagree with that. Right, cool. Uh could you turn Cabaret into a TV into a TV show? No. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think that they could do like a HBO show, like limited show with the production value of Buzz Lerman? Do you remember Robert Altman's last movie? Um about the Lake Wobegon radio host and Lindsay Lohan was in it and it centers around a stage radio you don't no. remember this I don't think so it's so yes I could see them turning cabaret into something like that Robert Altman film of television <laughs> that's very convoluted but I personally wouldn't I don't think it should 
I think this is a play and plays are very special and contained and focus on a very specific either story or points in time and I, I feel like this expanding this might ruin it. Okay. No, that's fair. I I don't think that I would turn in a TV show either. I think that they could, as you said, but I don't think that it would be like a good result. I had a feeling that is something that it would be more of a money grab more than anything else. Yep. Uh, nice. Would I do it? Yeah. yeah, they would love to do it. Those bastards. Uh, could Cabaret have been a short? No. It could have been less than two hours. I will say that. I don't <laughs> think it could be less than an hour. Uh, I agree. I think that it's like, yeah, you could make it shorter, but I don't think that you can make it like less than an hour short for a short like just displaying like all of the tensions that this character has and how they evolve like along the way and how the country actually evolves along them. Uh, do you think that this movie could have been better? No, and even my minor complaint about how they could have edited some stuff out, it's not a major complaint at all. I, yeah. There's no glaring problem for me in this film. I agree. I think that this is a movie, I wouldn't say that it's perfect, but I say that, is that there is no glaring omission about like, okay, it lasts long, it's, like, it's fine, it's two hours, it's that like, I can tolerate this because it's entertaining along the way. The characters, as, even like when you were defining, when you were like summarizing it, it feels like some characters, you could remove them and the story could remain more or less the same, but it really depends about like what you're trying to get out of the story. So from that perspective, I don't think that there is filler per se you could turn it into a different movie but for the movie that they're trying to do is as good as i think that it can get agreed cool uh so should we score it we should this so pick, yeah yeah so you have to score it first i'm gonna give it a nine. Oh wow okay Oh, uh, i had written down i'm going to be honest i have written down an eight at the beginning of the podcast, but from our conversation, I like it even more, and I'm going to be like giving it an 8.5. All right, we more or less agree. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I yeah, I I could feel comfortable even like giving it an eye. I think that is that like there is enough here and enough subtext on the movie, like I don't know, like transmitted in such a nuanced way that I feel like oh, this is a smart 70s movie that I can still watch today and just feel uncomfortable in the way that they wanted me to feel uncomfortable back then. Yeah, I, I think just I have been impressed by it every single time I've seen it, and that's been over the last 20 years, and I do think this is an important film. I think it captures a point in history that people don't understand or examine much, and it just holds up like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that, thank you so much for bringing it up first. Absolutely, you're welcome. <laughs> so, talking about like being thankful now, but maybe regret it later, what are we watching this? We are watching a movie called Saltburn by the same director that brought us a promising young woman. <laughs> it has a 71 in Rotten Tomatoes. I know, so. the score did drop a little bit from the actual release date, but I don't care. This trailer has everything that I, I like. Not everything, it has lots of things that I like and I want to see it. And we have okay. lots of time to go to movies in the next few days. So we're, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, yeah, no, that's completely fair. I mean, uh, anything else to say about Cabaret? Watch it. <laughs> that's it. Uh, and to everyone else out there putting up with us, thank you so much for listening to us. Uh... And uh, get your get your vaccinations. Flu, yeah. cold, COVID. Yeah, all of it. All the good assortment. Okay. Bye.